Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. So, starting to plan out the multi-band amp. I'm thinking about making it go down on 160 if I can, if I have enough room in this cabinet. So possibly 160 through 15, I'm not bothering with 10. I had started using this cabinet for something else and I stripped it down. So I have more of these cabinets. I'm going to replace this front panel so I don't have these extra holes. I had started making a, well I made a chimney assembly. This is before I knew about the thicker, actually before they were available, those thick Teflon chimneys. So this is I think elastic type material, like a like an epoxy type material. I had four pieces cut, drilled and tapped, secured to the floor, and then I guess it's just dusty, it's been sitting. A piece of Teflon with a perfect circle, and it, the anode is uh, two and a half inches away from ground on each side, so that's good. So some extra holes, I'll fill those in. This is a personal amp, so I don't really care about this stuff, you know, these extra holes and stuff. I had replated it, normally there was a a divider wall here for a driver, another wall here. So I'm going to show you what it'll look like, a stock one looks like. And like I said, I have multiple cabinets like this. Let me go back to it. I lost it on my phone. One second. Okay, so similar to this right there. See that? So it's a rolling cart. The RF deck slides out on casters. All the power supply components will be down here. Blower set up down here and it pushes up like I did with the six meter amp. Bottom half is not on casters. This whole cabinet's on casters and has you know outer you know panel pieces. This is in the back of my truck at my, my old house. So I have a few of these. So that's the plan. I'll have a new front panel made, cut at the machine shop I use, and it'll have different metering. The knobs will be turns, counters, and different spots. It'll have a Pi output network, progressively shorting rotary switch, and a Pi input network also with a progressively shorting rotary switch. So, I think I'm going to use, you know, I'll have, you know, these are the components I think I'm going to use. So, that's a uh, Comet. I know it's a little bit bigger than I need. Um, with the, uh, me and Jim, we figured out the um, plate load impedance, and even 500 puff is, uh, more than I need to get down on 160 if I decide to go down there uh, but I already have this so it's free <laughs> you know I got it for nothing so 15 slash 9 kV and I have a uh, 35 to 3000 puff cap for the load side also enough to get down on 160 with the plate load impedance I'll have so um, I have a four contact progressively shorting rotary switch so with all the contacts open, I can do 160, then 80, 40, 20, 15, or if I don't decide to do 160, I can add 17 meters in on that. So I already made the uh, 80 meter coil. Actually, I have to, there are more turns there than I need. I'm going to take some of the turns off. I only needed about 15 feet of tubing. I wound the whole 20 feet. So um, I need to take some turns off, spread them. <coughs> I've been sick here, that's why I haven't been making videos. So I'll have the proper gap between turns. And then for the higher frequencies, I have a whole bunch of these coils. So I'm going to need some pre-inductance. And this gives me what I need. I ended up needing like 2.35 microhenry. So um, I'll take these straps off. And I already have it. And this material is hard to bend. So I already have all, like I don't know, 10 or 15 of these. So I'm going to use it. Why not? It'll most likely be vertical. Um, I'm going to go to Home Depot today. I'm going to buy some quarter inch OD material for the 160 coil and move things around, see what I can do. I'm going to have to modify the front panel so the switch will protrude through the panel. I'm going to get rid of these standoffs. This whole assembly here, the detent you know, um, assembly, will have to be in the front just so I can get it closer because I'm eating up room having it push back like that so I got lucky with these I have uh, another one and um, it'll be my spare these are still made it's mo made by multi-tech so I think I've, sh I've shown this before where I doubled up the contacts this a long time ago um, turns it from a 40 amp to an 80 amp 80 80 amp 
and um, more than enough for what I need. So this will also be a 10 kilowatt continuous amp. I already have two burner tubes, I have socket, I have the plate supply. Uh, those transformers are made by MagSpec over in California. MagSpec or MagnaSpec, I forget. Um, I think it's MagnaSpec. Uh, the company that made transformers for Henry Radio, they also made the ECA transformers, that was their old name. Um, but uh, I already have them, so why not use them? They have a 4300 volt AC tap and a 5300 volt AC tap. I have two of them and um, they're rated for 1.5 amps each CCS. They weigh 152 or 153 pounds, so I'm going to use those. And uh, you already have most of the stuff. I'll use two RJ2Bs for the output switching, an RJ1A for the input switching, and an RJ1A for the bias switching. So um, a lot of what I learned with the 6 meter amp will be incorporated into this with the the speed up circuit for the relays, the you know the metering, all that stuff will be the same. The difference for this will be it has it'll have a um, you know it'll be a multi-band, it won't be mono band. So this will be a first multi-band amp like this that I've made with the 6000 and um, should be fun. Uh, but uh, other than that, I've I've done the rest like a million times. So so that's about it. So stay tuned, this is going to be a slower, I know the other one took forever because I had to move and repairs take priority over building stuff and um, you know I have uh, amplifiers being delivered today so I have to wait for the FedEx guy and hopefully next week I'll be good enough to work. But uh, I'm going to start chipping away on this first off, replace that panel and um, Actually, I'll cut out, um, when I end this, I'll go over in the other room and show you the cabinets and show you what I'm talking about so you can get an idea. But these are really nice cabinets. See how thick they are? It's like an eighth. I'd have to measure it. I think it's like a, close to an eighth inch. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's almost, almost, yeah, it's an eighth inch thick. It's really solid and plated. So... But when this is done, I'll have the roadmap, and then if you know someone wants one, they'll get one. <laughs> uh, another difference between this and the other one, it'll have more voltage on the anode, so the drive requirement will be less. Um, uh, had to go with lower voltage on the anode. That had to do with the uh, all that ex uh, extra capacitance between the uh, the uh, grid and the plate. So. Um, I factored into the uh, output network and uh, you know, I had to pull more current to anyway I'm not getting into it so this one's got more anode voltage the other one had less for a reason I'll just put it like that so I will be right back I'll show you the other cabinets see you in a second okay so I'm back so before anyone criticizes this uh, area this is a small room here in my home that I use for part storage. Next year I'll be going through all this stuff and getting rid of a lot of it. I just have way more stuff than I need. Just way, way more stuff. Um, a lot of money's worth of stuff. A lot of Andrews connectors and all sorts of stuff. But anyway, so here's one of the rolling carts. You can see the power supply section. So they had it set up with the gasket material and the blower will be mounted in here. Cover comes off, blower's mounted to it. Uh, transformers will be separate. I'll use the SuperCon connectors, big 250 amp ones, and the proper high voltage cable uh, to connect the secondary to the this section. But all the con yeah, primary switching, all that stuff, soft start, filter caps, all that will be in here. Um, so I have the panels in another room, but I have side panels, back panel. There's another power supply section. And there's another one. So. You know, I'm a, I used to be a junkie with buying this stuff. You know, I love love amplifiers. Here's one that I started taking apart because I needed some capacitors out of it. But you can see how the stock configuration was. There's a wall here, so I took that out, took the side wall out, put an L bracket here, and I put a piece of metal across. So here's a stock front panel. I'm thinking about possibly reusing the meter, I don't know, it, it just would be, you know, a lot cleaner if I just make a whole new panel because then I'd have 
the uh, extra holes. I can't, I won't be able to line that all up. Or maybe I can, I don't know. So I might change my mind. So I haven't really planned it out all the way yet. Um, so here's the uh, umbilical cord. Here's the back panel. Goes through a tube which has uh, metal under here and it has an Alden type connector that plugs into the bottom cabinet and then there's a interlock um, presses up against that. So there are a lot of safety features with these stuff and I'll integrate those into the other amplifier and there's one of the driver sections and there's another panel and I have extra meters in the box so, so there's lots of lots and lots of stuff. Okay, so I will be back uh, probably with, well, I'm sure with a amp, uh, amp repair video before uh, I do any more videos on this, but I have another one of those EBM Paps blowers. I will be using that for this. And with this one, I might actually, I'm floating the idea. I have one of, the, I do have one of those Teflon chimneys, another one. So I'm floating the idea of having the chimney between the top of the tube and the top cover because it's going to be a continuous duty amp, and I already have one. Um, and it's just, it, the problem is it's a much smaller uh, enclosure than I really should be using. And uh, the cabinet is just different. You know, if I had like an open screen, it'd be fine. But I'm thinking about putting the chimney between the tube and the top cover to get rid of some of that hot air, and then I'll I'll have another more cooling to cool the other components, all the coils and everything, because there's just so much going on in there. But uh, so thanks for watching. Have yourselves a great day, and uh, I will talk to you soon. I thought about using that cap, but the puller is just way too long, and they're, the cat capacitor is going to be pointing down, so this was, you know, plus it has the larger shaft on here, and I need a right angle drive attached to it, so this just this wouldn't work. It would end up bottoming out, and I thought about putting it up on standoffs, but I just don't want to do that. I have the other cap. This is a budget build, because I already have most of this stuff, so I'm going to try to build it for as cheap as possible, but but do it the right way. Um, and it's a, uh, like I said, it's a, it's going to be a, you know, it's a learning experience and it'll be the, the, uh, you know, the plan for future ones, you know. I don't know of anyone building anything big anymore with a progressively shorting rotary switch. There was another guy who was making it with roller inductors. Roller inductors are just not good for multi-band amplifiers and the inductors he was using were undersized. And believe it or not, the inductors are actually more than twice the amount of the proper band switch so so okay well have a great day and i will be back soon 73 amprepairguy.com please like share and subscribe i really appreciate it